assassinated. But you're, it's going. All right. I can see most. It's forty-four. Here. Yes. Okay. There we go. We good? Yeah. What's up, dudes? Hello. This is Anthony from Amped Airsoft. I got my battle buddy. Matt. This is Asked Amp episode 44. I'm still keeping track somehow, so we're going to keep running with this. He just did 40 plus 4. That's all I keep doing. Um, but anyways, it's a question and answer show where you submit your questions down below in the do ba do um, this is the second video that has been recorded in our one of our new studios. We're still building the other one, so um, there's going to be yeah. some new stuff thrown in on this, too. So there might be a couple little things that get tossed in just for addition's sake, but yeah. we're rolling with it. Thanks for sticking by, uh, and especially for all those dudes who have orders out. Um, yes. Thanks for being patient. We appreciate that. Um, especially, yeah, there's, we're having a little bit of growing pains right now, but that's given with moving into a much bigger facility. And again, for all of our local dudes... The storefront is exactly in the same spot. Yeah, the, so store, the store. Don't worry about that. Yeah, the store itself is still exactly where it is. It's just all the dudes who lived in the basement that you never saw. That you never saw, like us. We're now free. We've now been liberated. Something like that. Um. Yeah. Anyways, pick a question, bro. We're gonna do it. What do we got here? This is from Justin Handley. Handley. Uh, I found you, found you guys through the review of the Tipman and have been loving the Ask Amp videos. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, I was also OIF2, uh, 0405, as well as a uh, Spiker? You know what that is? Uh, I, think yeah, he means camp, I think he's meant camp. camp Spiker. That's what I was thinking. Spicer? Spicer? Whatever. The Germans were there. Best part of Airsoft is using all this super cool guy stuff I never got to in the Army. For real, though. Standard issue, M16A2, no attachments, woodland interceptor body armor, DCU, LCE, LBV, over top of that. If it's not issued, you can't use it. It's fun bear song. I know this. I know the struggle. Do you go in circles of full-on high-speed operator gear, then go back to the classics? I'm assuming this is mostly directed I am you. assuming so. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. What happens is, um, especially when I first got into Airsoft, and I was like, I can buy whatever I want. Huh. And so then what I did was uh, I started buying all kinds of crazy stuff. And I still buy all kinds of really crazy, like, one-off chest rigs and, like, cool stuff like that. Like, I buy all kinds of weird stuff. But then also I have moments where I'm like, I really miss my old shit just because of the nostalgia of it. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, um, I bought a Woodland... I bought a Woodland uh, SDS rack, rack. And, and ran it over old school soft armor and a Woodland backpack, you know. Like, there are moments, and I built an M16A2, also slash Canadian. More of a C7. Canadian C7, like slash Canadian C7, and I was running that for a while, which was really fun. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to just go in loops. Uh, right now, I'm building, like, lots of really high-speed lightweight backcountry like recon style kit because mm -hmm. of uh milson west who we were, were out in the field for 40 hours and hiking for multiple kilometers i don't want to wear a plate carrier and be all like Ugh. yeah so that's what i'm doing right now but i have a feeling i'm going to start mixing that with like old school stuff because i picked up a uh, tactical tailor rudder rack and it's covered in nothing but woodland pouches <laughs> so like old school paraclete that. woodland pouches and stuff even though it's multicam I just, you know, I, I do. I go in cycles. Like, I buy cool stuff for a while, and then I get bored of it, and then I get old school stuff because I appreciate it, mm -hmm. and then I go back and forth. Um, do you do the same thing? Not so much because I obviously I wasn't, I didn't serve, so I don't have the... Uh, the nostalgia. I don't have the nostalgia of being connected to having to love something or at least deal with something that I had to use, not that I got the choice to use, which, I mean, I think that's really one of the cool things about Airsoft is that... Mm -hmm. We get to pick the cool guy stuff we use, and it's not a life-threatening or life-threatening thing. Shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, usually. Unless you're playing in asbestos. <laughs> yeah. Dom's still coughing from Dom Red is still, Storm. still coughing from Red Storm. Um, I tend to just kind of have kits based on, like my 6094, my plate carry is just my generic. I know I can always grab that if, say... We're hitting up a weekend game for mm -hmm. some more vending or for going CQB to a local game. field for CQB. I know for most types of games, I could just grab that, and usually the array of pouches that's on it will work for me. Mm -hmm. There's always the right amount of mags, there's a first aid kit, somewhere to carry a tank, water, accessories. And then Milson West, I always just have a 
chest rig kit built, mm-hmm. and then yeah, me and you basically all run your rock kit. The same style. Almost all the yeah. guys at the shop, we all run the same style of kit at MSW. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of Dom, right now, Dom's one of the only ones that's still running a full plate carrier setup. No, he's got a chest rig. Well, he just got it. No, he's had a D3, remember? Oh, that's right. He got a D3. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But, like, for the most part, all of us at Milson West especially, we all run, like, real light, like, setups that are chest rigs. We mm-hmm. kind of get rid of battle belts and all that crap that we don't need. I'm not a fan of them. Because we don't want to carry all the extra weight. But then when we go play it, like, more, like, like direct action type games, what I'm starting to call them, because that's all they're simulating constantly is just constant yeah, fire fights. shooting. Um... I'll wear different kit for that where I'll carry more mags and mm-hmm. more pyro and less, like, GPSs and sustainment gear. Food. Food. <laughs> um, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, like, me and him basically run the same style of kit when we go to the different games that we go to. Because generally we're, nowadays, uh, because we live here versus where we used to live, we go to games together a lot. So, like, we tend to run the same stuff because yeah. we both look at each other and we're like, Oh, yeah, that'll suck. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Now, the fun thing we do do, though, is that me and him collect all kinds of heinous camo schemes. That's where our collector shit really that shines. out of hand. Because this guy has, like, super rare, like, UCP Delta. Um, thanks to my battle boo that I'm going to send your chest rig probably yep. today or tomorrow. If I remember. Sorry, I keep forgetting. It's not personal, but I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I got, like, Cad Pat and Lat Pat. Like, all these super rare, like, weird camo schemes that are just, like, so heinous and fun. I yeah. got some, like, mountain, Digi Mountain Flora, or Digi Flora. I got mm-hmm. uh, Desert Oz Cam. That, I just consider it rare because we got all the, those Cry Field, like, pants and tops for dirt oh. cheap. I just think that's hilarious. Picked up some so, Cries for, like, I just think that's funny. Like, half price. <laughs> Like that, dude, that, dude, that dude's eBay page disappeared, so I'm a little sad. He's yeah, you picked me. up a Cry Field top for what, forty bucks? Forty plus shipping, I think. <laughs> so like fifty brand bucks, new. brand new. Like, <laughs> you guys got to source stuff, dude. You gotta source it. I don't Whatever. Go for it. Um, but yeah, like I do rotate a lot though, because I get like pains and nostalgia where I'm like, oh, I miss, I miss, the, I miss yeah. being miserable for that's, like five minutes. That's the glorious stuff too, is you get to try oh, Jesus. different kit out all the time too. Whew. Doing it. That one snuck in. Uh, okay. Nuclear air softers. Hey, Amped, I just got five hex mags. I'm already having issues. The springs sometimes will get stuck, but the real problem is that it will simply not feed BBs well, especially when you put all 120 BBs in it. With 0.2 gram BBs, it has some minor feeding issues, but with threes, it will not feed at all. It is down to about the last 30 BBs in the mag. I've tried using BBs. I tried leaving BBs in it overnight. Um, to see if that would help the spring, but it didn't work. I feel like shit because my $6 mags feed flawlessly and have nothing but problems with the expensive ones. Um, is there a break-in time for these mags? Does it have something to do with the hop-up? I'm just I'm just using the stock hop-up, and sometimes I feel better if I push the mag slightly towards the hop-up. Also, just an FYI, you said it fits in VFC bodies fine, but you actually have the to shim them sideways in the mag, shim the sides in the mag well a little bit, and it's not a big deal. Thanks for being the best, and thank you, Matt, for pronouncing nuclear correctly. I mean, I, went to, I went to college. Yeah, so. I mean, we went to college. Doesn't mean we did well, but we went to college. <laughs> um, taught us things. The hex mags, it's like like we say with everything in airsoft, your mileage your, may vary. Your results. Yeah, your results may- and everything. Um, First thing that we always say that it's it's kind of hard to explain to some people because they see when, when you see a number you expect to get that so when you see mid caps that are 120 190 rounds you're like I'm gonna get that many rounds. No. On the other hand, we're always like I just put 100 into them. I've Every never... mag that is a mid cap is 100 rounds to me because it's it's easier on the mags spring. Much easier on your mags. Longevity of the mag lasts a lot longer. Way easier for you to keep track of stuff. So like if. Fun bonus, square. fun bonus yeah. thing. You basically memorize how many rounds are in your mag. Mm-hmm. So when you are shooting, you because you load them the same amount every single time. Yeah. You learn. Oh, well, I shot about that much. I should probably change my mag. So mm-hmm. you don't run dry in the middle of firefights. And you can also it helps because indexing your mags and airsoft is a lot harder than real steel because real steel you can like pistol mags you can look and it's got the holes in the back that say how much. Yeah, for Glock. Airsoft, for it's. Like the EPM, certain ones, they have the little clear windows you can sort of see. I miss the old clear P mags. Yeah. But for airsoft, it's a little hard. So when you do, because we use little pistol loaders, and that's roughly 100 rounds. Each mag has 100 rounds. 
So say you're two mags down, like you're out 200 rounds and say you've got 600 or 400 or For whatever For MSW, left. that makes yeah. it very easy too because everybody wants to use these big speed loaders and stuff. I use just a little stupid pistol loader. It's easier to hide and then And then, first of all, I can shove it in places mm -hmm. and hide it. But second of all, I load exactly 100 rounds in every mag. So when I get issued my 500 rounds, I put five five mags. I have yep. one in the gun and then four in my chest rig. And then I have all of my ammo loaded. There's nothing for anybody to steal from me. Sorry for gas blowback, guys. That kind of sucks. But, yeah. Um... um but, like, my thing is is that, one, don't leave BBs in your mags. Yeah, the thing, like... Don't do that. Because the quality of the springs are, in any airsoft mag is nowhere near as strong as what they should be. Yeah, ma when breaking in mags, it's not the spring that needs to be broken in. Because you want to keep... It's the tension of the spring. It's the follower and the track itself. The thing with it... Some people I've seen the, have the issues with it. The hex mag uh, follower, if you haven't actually pulled it out or looked at it, it's a two-piece hinged one. So if you jam BBs in the wrong way, if you have poor ammo, things of that nature, the follower content can sometimes get bent and catch in the track funny. Mm -hmm. So that's our buddy Too Tall. He came up with his one-piece followers. Those actually solve that problem at all. Yeah, and they great, don't actually. actually come out of the mag because like the, uh, the standard hex mag one comes out of the feed lips mm -hmm. and will feed pretty much all, your, all of your rounds. Toms will leave like three or four on the mag still, but the follower cannot come out of the mag. Yeah, which is, which good. is good. But yeah, so basically, like, yeah, there's break in time on nice mags. Mm -hmm. You need, if you want to try to get them, if you're having feeding problems, don't leave your springs compressed. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, if you have problems, open them up. You can unscrew them and take them apart and look on the inside. If you're having problems, you can very gently and do not do a whole lot, but you can gently clean out the track that the mm -hmm. BBs travel in to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also put like a drop of silicone oil on the, uh, on just one tiny microscopic little drop. You don't even probably have to do that much. Maybe just take mm -hmm. a Q-tip and just dust the follower and then load yeah. it and unload it so that there's just enough grease on the track to where it slides easier. Mm -hmm. Cause I you don't want to get that on your BBs cause then it'll affect your hop up. I had to do the same thing. I got a box of the elite force mid caps, brand new. Mm -hmm. They fed like shit right off the bat. So, what I did was I got, like, a bag of, like, a thousand or so, like, two fives that I didn't use anymore. What I did was I actually did a spritz of silicone in each mag, and mm -hmm. then I would load, unload, load, unload. I did that for about two weekends straight. And I didn't even run these mags at any games. Did that to them, and that actually Fixed did the breaking in. As in the spring didn't need to be tensioned or compressed at all it just it kind of it just smoothed, smoothed the track smoothed, out smoothed the track out yeah so it's little things like that like each mag is gonna be different like you said your six mag six dollar mags work perfectly for you <laughs> you haven't noticed from the wide shot we have there's a, a window giant window right here which is cool it's hilarious but distracting there's a lot of questions we gotta get to we gotta like fucking speed up yeah <laughs> Like, do you think we're going to answer all these? Sometimes we do. No, we don't. Uh, Juke Airsoft, would you recommend upgrading the hop chamber on a Maru VSR-10? Once the Wolverine bolt comes out, I'm planning oh. on setting one up with the absolute best hop-up barrel setup I can. Budget is not a factor. Well, if you're getting, yeah. Oh, it's right there. Also, Hi. any recommendations for the Hi. bucking? Thanks. Well, obviously it's out in the wild now. Yes, we... Res oh. uh, we were at Blind Fury in Ohio last summer, and Rich and uh, Rich and a couple of his dudes from Wolverine were there. We hung out with them all weekend. They were showing off a lot of products, and he handed us the well, one of the test model bolts. When we went to go get our certification for Wolverine teching, mm -hmm. which Amped Airsoft is a Wolverine certified tech, you should probably come talk to us. Hey, so am I and Matt and Kurt. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but we were fawning over his prototype of this. Yes, we got to shoot his his first original first one. one. Oh my god. And so then he had one made for us and we have just been sitting on it mm -hmm. and not cuz we're not really allowed to talk about it per se because it's not we official. So now we are. Yeah. Um expect we, a video soon. So this is the prototype of the Wolverine Bolt. There's like two or three more people with prototypes out in the wild. I there's know there's a handful. KP, KP has one. Yeah. Um this is in a Tokyo Marui VSR-10. Yep. What's fun about this is that the inner barrel literally only goes to here, and this is uh, a cream-filled banana. Yep. This thing is whisper quiet, even without the can it's on it. disgustingly quiet. 
Um, with the with the stock hop up with a upgraded bucking, mm-hmm. um, and I think an upgraded barrel with the Wolverine kit in it, this is about. I mean, one hundred percent. You can if you can time your shots right, and you don't have like outside variables like wind. And you have your weapon sighted. You can point shoot. You can point shoot 250 <laughs> feet. Like, I can just aim at your chest, and I will hit you in the chest at 250 mm-hmm. feet with this. No problem. Um, at Balahack, I was winging them out there stupid. I was shooting across the pond at a diagonal and sniping mm-hmm. dudes across it. On the second floor. Yeah, and when I was on the second floor of that Escher building, I was pooping on dudes all the way outside of the town. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it's such a good... It, it's with the Marui especially because the Marui is just all high quality parts. Yeah. Um, even stock, it's such a good shooting gun that uh, I only loaded five magazines. They hold about twenty rounds apiece. I think so. So that's about a hundred rounds. I got about sixty kills. Yeah. I was just literally and, and and I was just like I would be looking at dudes, be like, "You ever seen one of these?" They're like, "No, what is that?" And I'm like, "Watch this, click click." Dude, dude, kid would just get hit. He'd be like, "Because huh? he can't hear it." And yeah. I would just, and I would literally hand it to the guy. I'd tell him because my scope was all off. <laughs> and like, oh yeah, we didn't sight that. We didn't at all. sight it in at all. And like I, I'd stand in front of him and let him rest the gun on my shoulder. And then I would just be like, aim for like his, aim for like the aim to the left and about at his knee level. And the hop up will take it right into the middle of his chest. And he's like, dudes are just like, okay. Pew. Holy crap! I was like, it's so fun. It's, it's it's so dirty. cool, dude. It's so um, cool. We ran it for quite some time with the stock set up, and like you said, it was insane. Currently, we are right now. It is has a PDI hop chamber and barrel installed in, so we threw some more swag in it. Yeah, we're testing it to see how good. We juice. haven't ran it too much since then, so hopefully, yeah, there's a couple couple games coming up. We're going to be running it, and uh, like I just said, definitely going to do a video on it soon because dudes have been feeding over this thing. And I, I don't blame them. It's I can system. honestly say that out of all the HPA products coming out right now. The things I'm most excited for are the Bolt and the uh, the Wolverine tank stock, the Wraith. Those are probably. I didn't even call it that. Like the two the, 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 the CO tank. the CO two stock, yeah. like which we'll get into later on. Like, we'll, we're gonna have a discussion about that, but yes, but for you guys who actually pay attention to these videos, the Bolt is looking late summer release. Late summer release. So you guys can get your hands on it. I you know, think the thing is good. I think the thing is really good. Let me reset. All right, guys. So to break up a little bit of the monotonous that Ask Amp can sometimes turn into, we're going to start throwing in little segments to kind of, you know, show off new products that we may not get to do videos for, talk about maybe certain subjects that we want to hit on but don't want to expend an entire video for, all sorts of little things like that. We got a lot of ideas planned, so some of them may get pretty stupid, let's be honest. But for my first segment, I wanted to actually give a quick shout out to the NATO products dudes. If you remember in our last Ask Amp video, Somebody asked about knee, uh, actually these specific uh, knee pad supports. Not gonna lie, we made a lot of Forrest Gump jokes. Um, but the dudes that actually make these, uh, I believe his name is Miguel, he sent us a message and he was like, hey, we wanna send these to you guys because, you know, we were honest, we've never actually seen these before or actually used them. So he was a really cool dude to talk to and he sent us a couple pairs out to actually try out. So, you know what? We'll, we'll own up to that stuff. If we say something stupid and you call us out, we'll try it out and we'll be honest about it. So, these actually just arrived earlier today. We've been tinkering with them a little bit. Uh, most of us have like the kind of like the cry style knee pads, so we're gonna see if we can dig up our old knee pads and maybe uh, give you guys a quick video for these next week. They're interesting. They are made of like a really high dense plastic. They hook around your uh, calf and kind of rest on the top of your boot, and then this piece clamps into the bottom of your knee pad, keeps it from sliding down. Kind of a neat idea. Uh, I believe he is a uh, construction worker, kind of an industrial worker, and 
a lot of those guys wear knee pads and they need them to stay in place when they're doing stuff. So that's, this actually came from an industrial application. Obviously, knee pads translate very easily over to airsoft and things of that nature. So that just happened to work out. So keep your eyes peeled in the near future. Like we said, the dude called us out, so we'll give him an honest review of these. We'll give him a try. And for my next uh, little segment, probably Ask Amp 45, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek at these fancy boys. They're really comfy. Yeah. All right, boys, we're back. It is said. It is, it is now a thing. It has been preached. Uh, Samir Jones. Hey, guys. Oh, I was... that's, uh, remember kid who showed up? Oh, yeah. Shade did one, yeah. Yeah, all right, I remember you now. Hey guys, I was wondering if the Mayflower Research and Consulting 556 Hybrid Chess Rig is a product you would stand behind. Um, I'm asking because I got a terrible Matrix play character. Wow, you're just jumping the shark, dude. You're going from like that to like a Mayflower. He's doing mad upgrades. He's doing mad upgrades. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm asking because I got a terrible Matrix play character to start out with, and it sucks. I'm 5'9", 180 pounds, so you're about my size and Matt's size. He's actually, he's roughly my size. Yeah. A little bigger. Uh, do you think this would fit my frame? By the way, thanks for recommending the HSGI shoulder pads. They are worth the money. Also, when I went to the shop over the summer, it was awesome. That was one of the best birthday trips ever from Shane. Hashtag Mother's Gun Shop. I got you, boo. We appreciate Sticker Game. Um, yeah, so the Mayflower Consulting Chess Rig. Okay. I'll stand behind Damn near anything Mayflower makes. I'm sorry. I have owned a Mayflower APC, um, which I sold be just because like I wanted to get something else, and I haven't actually replaced it yet. Mm -hmm. But I love the APC. I'm actually probably just gonna get another APC because what's happening is I keep going in circles and I keep going. Well, Coming my back to it. Like, well, my APC did that too, and it was really nice. So like, I keep doing that. I keep going in loops. Um, but yeah, I had a Mayflower APC. I had a Mayflower UV or UW chest rig type three, and right now I have a UW chest rig type four, which is a multicam the split front. Mm -hmm. um, also, it got turned into later the type five, which is the pusher. Yeah. Um, I love Mayflower flower products. They are made of very high quality nylon. They're very well stitched. They're a part of Velocity System, which is also another company that makes really high-end armor carriers that are very nice and retain their value. I will stand behind any of their products yeah. any day. Like, no doubt. Their stuff's solid. Super solid. I love it. Um, would the, would the uh, 556 rig, would I stand behind it? So, yes, I totally would. Um, yeah, it'll totally fit you, too. And would it fit yeah. you? Yes. I always recommend to people who are worried about fitment issues with plate carriers and things like that, Actually, just skip that step. Go straight to his chest ring. Mm. If you're a big dude and you're worried about getting the right size plate carrier, especially for airsoft where you don't have to worry about getting shot all the way through with a BB, um, get a chest ring. If you're a little tiny dude, like you're real skinny and mm -hmm. you don't know if you can find one that can cinch down all the way, get a chest ring. They will cinch down. They will cinch down. Start there mm -hmm. and then work your way around to a, ch a plate carrier later when you figure out by trying things on what sizes fit you and stuff like that. Because with a plate carrier, it's all about the fitment. Like the plate's supposed to start about mm -hmm. two finger heights below the little divot where your neck bones are. That's why there's like so many variants of them. Like the sixteen ninety four has like in standard there's like four or five just variants. Like there's like the sixteen ninety four A, the B. So technically, C. despite me being six yeah. feet tall, because of my torso shape and the, where mm -hmm. my vitals fall, because I have a more squat torso, I'm not like like super mm -hmm. stretched out. I need a medium plate bag, even though I'm a six foot tall guy. But then, like, because then there's other things like sometimes you need like a medium plate bag and like large cummerbund or something. And I need like a like, bigger yeah. cummerbund because I'm bigger around than I am tall. So like, because I have like a 46 inch wide chest. Yeah. But like, I'm I, I don't have as much height between here and here as someone who's normally my normally my height. So I need a medium plate bag. So mm -hmm. like, I always tell people to start with chest rigs. Start with a really yeah. good high end chest rig. Especially one that'll accept multiple types of magazines, too. So that way, if you ever change platforms, you can yep. just use whatever mags will fit in there. Um, super, super good to do that because then you always have something that you can fall back on. Um, but yes, Mayflower, hands down. One of the yeah. top tier companies in America. Please, if you're going to jump from a Matrix plate carrier to all the way to the top, I mean, if you, if you can afford that cheddar dude, do it. Do it. Do it. Ball out.
Uh, this is from the Freddy. Hi guys, here in Europe. Uh, here in Europe is a really big game coming up: the Border War. Around three thousand players. <laughs> Could you imagine uh, leaving the U.S. for a big op like Border War? Forget beers. There's one called Beer Zone. What? I might go to that I'm, one. I'm down for Beer Zone. Five bucks. It's in Germany. We're gonna look this up later. Um, or do you wish that there was something comparable in the U.S.? Greetings from Germany. Can't read any of that. Sorry. Sorry for my really bad English. I Actually, that's it. pretty superior. You probably yeah. speak English better than half of our English watching audience. I'm gonna be real honest with you. Your grammar is on point. Your grammar yeah. is on point. Europeans, yeah, they, they're better at English. They're than better than English than Americans are. Um, Oh. Our our buddy Rich, Team Fart Rich, he's super down. He, on he going is so to down on just human wave. having waves of humans sh- being shot at and shooting each other, which is hilarious because ammo counting is not a thing to him. He just wants he got he bought the AA twelve just because it was funny. Yeah, he likes to like, burn. He just likes to shoot everyone. He likes to burn so, stuff, which like, I guess is fine. Like I'm yeah, not My gonna say you can't be, do that. I like to play. Three thousand people is insane. I like to play That's games insane. where it's less about the number of people, yeah. but more about the quality of the people that are playing. I would much rather play the against the quality of like each individual unit against other units. Like blah, that's blah, why blah. I yeah. work for Milson West, and that's why I love going to their games so much because it's smaller groups of people that are more dedicated to outsmarting each other and yeah. out endurance, and it's just it's so much fun now. Am I going to say that I won't have fun at a game like that? No. Because running around and blasting a potentially 1,500 1500 people would be hilarious. Especially if all of you guys overseas have HPA guns with cream-filled bananas, dude. You're going to be absolute terrors in a game like that because Mm -hmm. no one can hear you. Like, Um, I don't... Absolute Has really ever come close to that size? The biggest thing near us... Even just player count wise, it would be about five hundred. No, well, uh, there's the the Noob Day down in Tennessee. Oh, Noob they do. bring yeah, about nine hundred to th- about twelve thousand. or thirteen hundred. Yeah, it's a big. Game. But the, it, as the name states, it's Noob Day, so it's a lot of the time it's a lot of kid like parent or kids with their parents. Parents bring them out. New have guys that are new, like within the yeah. first couple years of playing, and they want to come to a big game. Or like a lot of guys, it's their first game, so that's kind yeah. of like an introductory thing. The game is very. The rules, what, even paced out. It's, well, the rules, rules are the rules, lax. the rule sets even laxer yeah. so that it allows more people to play. Like it's mm-hmm. not as restrict. I like games that are super restrictive. Yeah. I like games that are hard. I like the challenge. I like players who are just as dedicated to wrecking me as I am to wrecking them. Mm-hmm. Um, I like, I like it hard. Let's <laughs> do like now. Like I said, does it does it? Would I would love to go to a burgette once. Because mm-hmm. it's that's the, is that the island one? That's the island yeah. one because that sounds crazy. I see what beer zone is no beer zone's got me intrigued as well because <laughs> it's called beer zone. Um, I bet it's in Germany. I bet it's in Germany, which I'm even okay with. I'm completely okay with Germany. It's I was there one time. This is my Polar Star Fusion Engine. This is my Polar Star Fusion Engine. My name is Navarish. Oh goddamn! <laughs> I liked him. I met him. Navarish is a good guy. He's a really sweet guy. Actually, I met him in Milson West. Uh, he's Loves a, the Rice Krispies. He's not a does not understand Rice Krispies. Um, uh, <laughs> he's a good dude though. I really liked him. Um, Camille Stanick. I hope, I, dude. I hope I didn't ruin your name. I'm sorry. I think that's pretty straightforward. But I'm bad. <laughs> I won't argue that. <laughs> hey, ass. Love the show. Two questions for me. One, I'm a beginner and I watch a lot of vids to learn about the sport. And although I see a lot of stuff about grenades, I haven't seen almost any landmines, claymores, or traps. So how is it in airsoft with those? Like, can you tape a grenade to a door and set a tripwire from the pen? Two, I'm kind of thinking about buying a set of green zone camo, not decided yet, and I wanted to ask how would it go with Milson rules? Is it a commercial camo? So I'm not sure how it would work. Also, do you like the pattern and do you know... What would be a good alternative? Thanks. Oh, my, I had a moment. Sorry. Thanks. A oh, yeah, I just skipped a line. Thanks a lot, dudes. I went straight to read more, and I was like, thanks, read more. Why would I want to read more? I don't understand. Um, okay, so pardon my moment. Um, 
trips tra- traps and stuff. The real reason no one really sets traps is one, you have to come back for them. Yeah. And they are like, like a real claymore is you leave it there. It blows up and then it's just gone. Like, peace, peace. It's meant to slow somebody down, not something you have to go back and like it's two mouse traps with a so, bunch of crappy BBs. So in it. so there's like so there's a problem right there, you have to go back for it, which breaks the immersion of mm-hmm. using something like that. Um and in, two in majority of and game styles. And two, because it has to be safe, they're generally not effective. Mm-hmm. The, so what I suggest for people, um, if you're gonna use grenades if your event allows it, just use disposable pyro grenades because mm-hmm. they give the effect of the explosion and that shock mm-hmm. of being blown up where you're like, oh, what happened? Yeah. Um, but... Sounds you, cooler. You It does sound cooler. But like when you're playing at a really fast-paced event where you have to continuously move, you don't have to worry about your investment in going back and finding it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't count how many people I know who've had tornadoes picked up by other people. Tornadoes, thunder lost, bee cores. Thunder bee cores. Yeah. They've just, someone's kicked it and it's just mm-hmm. disappeared forever. Um, like, Pencot though. The Pencot. Oh yeah. Anyway, so Pencot. Oh, definitely I, get it. I love that. Now, if you're gonna use it, um, AMS is about the only event that you can use that camo at because they're a lot more lax over the type of green camos mm-hmm. you can use. Uh, MSW, um, it's not approved for use on the Russian Reg Four side. So. You Other can't that, use it like there. The majority, like, it's, it, but it, for open plays and stuff, yeah, dude, it's cool. Yeah. I love it. Uh, Depending where you are, it probably would work really well. Now, green schemes that you can use that'll work at a lot of events, uh, AOR2, Woodland. Um, at uh, AMS events, you can also use OD, mm-hmm. uh, Woodland Marpat. Yeah. Um, I like Green Zone, though, a lot. Pentecost Green Zone is really cool. Pentecost, yeah, it's... I would say get it just to have it because just because it's cool, heinous looking. I like I said, we collect all kinds of ugly shit. So like, <laughs> I have like a closet full of uniforms and camo that half the time I don't even wear and like forget I have. Like I just remembered I had a full Serpat uniform. Yeah, like, we were worried about crap. having to like have like yeah like op four style uniforms and then you know, he's like, oh yeah, I have a whole set of Serpat. I'm like, <laughs> See? thanks, Stu. Thank Love you. you. Uh, <laughs> Shengyun Zhao or Zhu. I, I definitely apologize for that one. Sorry. Hi, Amped. Uh, why people generally believe HP guns have longer range, effective range, than AEGs? Is it due to jewel creep? Is it hard to believe two guns that have the same barrel hop up, FPS, FPS consistency will perform any differently in terms of range, effective range? Uh, hashtag I hate hashtag and hashtag is for the kids. <laughs> I love how you purposely butchered using the hashtags, too. That's fun. You confused me, sir. Well done. <laughs> um, no, the, the thing is that the easiest way to explain this is that people always point fingers at HPA guns as being more long-range or more effective because you can more easily get one of those tuned for longer range or some better accuracy. For an AEG... A lot of times you have to put a little more fine tuning and effort and into you a have gearbox. To be able to build it. You have to actually have a good understanding of how a gearbox functions and what like what piece is affecting this piece. What do I need to pad mm-hmm. this part? What do I need to help a big, get better air and a, things of that a nature? Big, a big thing with the HPA range argument um, that you mentioned is an AEG has a set volume of air. Mm-hmm. So the piston goes back, draws air in, yep. goes forward compresses that air, pushes it out the nozzle, yep. and that is a set volume. Yep. An HPA gun uses compressed air that rapidly expands to fill. Now, if you take that yep. a that pressurized air, it's a lot more air in the same volume that a piston is. Mm-hmm. So even though it's leaving at the same velocity, an HPA gun is dumping a lot more air down the barrel. Now, if you're using the right barrel and hop-up setup, which, oh my god, more barrel questions incoming... Hashtag wrecking myself. I have to say that. We pretty much had them floundered at that point. Um, so basically, the reason HPA guns shoot better than some AEGs, uh, I wouldn't say all AEGs, I'd mm-hmm. say some, is that since it's dumping more air volume at the same velocity, it can more consistently and evenly mm-hmm. produce results exiting the barrel. I mean, when you take any of the drop-in systems or a fusion engine, and you put it compared to a standard a standard gearbox. gearbox, generally the HPA system is going to have, like he said, a more consistent punch. It's going to be more methodically timed out and everything. That's more... It's AEGs controlled, sometimes, it's you controlled know, like electronically. AEGs, like if you short stroke, 
you can get half compression sometimes, like, if you're yeah. shooting auto. Like, just looking at, like, chronos and stuff, like, again, you have to also realize we look at this as in a stock AEG or a stock HPA engine dropped into a shell. Yeah, like, there's... That's the way we are Yeah, that's how we always view Now, somebody like who is really good at teching... Oh, I see AEGs out shoot. Either HPA really good at insane. HPA teching or really good yeah. at um, AEG teching can obviously say, well, mine shoots better than X and then, or no, 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 yours doesn't shoot as good as mine. Mm -hmm. And they can argue back and forth all day. Yeah. Now, stock setups with unmodified barrels and stuff like that, shooting at the same output velocity with the same weight BBs and all that stuff, yes, there is a difference. And it has to do with the volume of air that is output from the system. Mm -hmm. Um but if you know what you're doing, you can take either system and make them shoot really good. Real good. Yeah. The only the only real perceivable thing with an HPA gun that actually is more in its favor, even though you can make a, an AEG shoot as well as an HPA gun, the problem is going to be cost. Because yeah. an AEG is going to cost a lot more to upkeep and get to that level. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a lot more patience and like skill with building things and understanding how mechanics work and physics and stuff like that. I mean, when you look at it, like, like, like if you want to do like a if everybody gearbox could, upgrade. Because if everybody could build an AEG that just shot laser beams. Yeah, they would. The HPA guns wouldn't exist. Because then you wouldn't have hoses, you wouldn't have to worry about air. You yep. just have batteries. Just batteries. Yeah. So if it were that good of a skill, mm -hmm. like if it was that easy, like it is easy for an HPA gun, that's why I bought them is because they, they last a lot longer, mm -hmm. their maintenance costs are very low, they're very robust. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier for me to get it to shoot super far than it is with an AG. It's it, it's convenience for me, basically, is what I chose it for. Yeah. So. Easy. It's all you boss. Word. Oh, we're sorry we messed up your name again. Because I know we did. I think I was close. That's all about how you're around, right? Yeah. Austin, too tall. Hey, what's up, Tom? I'll get your tank back to you. Uh, <laughs> when you coming to visit, Tom? Way to use your hashtag cadre privilege to give them... Your jump to rust off experience all over the table right out at the go. Hashtag 80 percenter. Now for a serious question. Why is it that airsofters have no concept of what a column is and how to walk in a straight line? Anthony, please, for the love of hashtag triggering, explain to the plebs what a column is and why it is important. While we are at it, what a file line is as well. Thanks. Hashtag Reagan kids. Hashtag A28. Represent. Hashtag founding fathers, hashtag praise cat, the hashtag the Slava Boo Slayers, and hashtag basic human rights. All right, so for all of you guys that are new to walking around in the woods, there's only a handful of military formations that are actually useful in airsoft. The flying V. So um, the two that you're going to use the most often are going to be the file that's flat and the column which is like walking in a line. Um, there's very there's a couple of things that are very important. We're going to start with the column because that's the easiest. The most important thing about the column is that everybody is watching the sides mm -hmm. and the guys, the one or two guys that are in the front are watching forward and the one or two guys that are in the back are watching the back. You have to evenly space yourselves out when you're walking. And the reason that is is because one guy is a target, two guys is an opportunity. So if you bunch up, it's, say, like a difficult piece of terrain where you guys have to take your time and navigate. If you mm. all bunch up, it only takes one 203 grenade or RPG or machine gun to kill all of you. So it's very, very important to keep about a five-yard interval between each one of you while you're walking and patrolling. Because mm. if you fuck that up and somebody jumps you, it only takes two guys to wreck an entire platoon if you fuck that up really bad. The, the, the more difficult one for airsofters to manage is the flat file. Now, 90% of airsoft engagements are usually decided within the first minute or two of the engagement. So basically what's going to happen, and it's true with any engagement in real life as well, usually yeah. it's the person that has the most aggressiveness is the one that's going to win. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you're in an open field and you are jumped by an enemy, what you're going to do is you're going to get on what's called a flat file. All of you are going to be about five yards away from each other. You're all going to put your guns up and you're going to walk at the same speed and shoot and yep. move into the enemy and overtake them and crush them. Whoever's the most aggressive is going to win. Now, the problem with that is that airsofters get scared because they're getting shot at. Oh, no. And they like to bunch up like this and get real tight. And that also, like I said, one guy's a target, two guys an opportunity. So you got to spread out. Flat file. Attack. Easy.
<sighs> All right, guys, this is my first preaching on my Pelican case. I brought a gun so you would pay attention. It's probably going to be a recurring theme. Because to be honest with you, I need to keep your internet attentions, and they're very short. But I got some beef. Maybe that's because I'm a little older than you guys. Maybe, maybe I just grew up in a different spot out in, you know, rural Ohio. But where I come from, maybe it's my military days, I don't know. Uh, but where I come from, when you talk garbage on people, you do it face to face. And you back it up. Uh, nowadays with the internet, um, people feel invincible and they like to get online and they like to antagonize people and treat them like crap. They like to make fun of them and generally harass them. Not fucking cool. Uh, we're one community. And there's plenty of people out there that are looking to tear everything we do down every day. And I'm not going to let you guys sit there and bicker and fight amongst each other when there's people trying to take everything that you love apart. So stop being dicks to each other. Get your shit together and don't be assholes. I'm done preaching for this week. I'll catch you guys later. Deuces. We are back. We're doing things. That was a nice one. Hampton AMR. Who is the owner of Amped? Well, you can you can harass him via Facebook. Oh Jesus. On his public figure Facebook page, <laughs> Curtis Hardy, <laughs> owner and proprietor of Amped Airsoft. Uh, the owner's name is Curtis Hardy. Curtis Hardy. Um, he's been airsofting since, since like the beginning of time, I think. A pretty long. Yeah. Well, he was paintballing before that. Yeah. He's always been in the action games arena in some way or another. Yeah. Uh, he's originally been from the Pitt Pittsburgh area, and mm -hmm. Anthony and I met him... Before this shop existed. Yeah. yeah. Long time We met time him ago. back when Amped was Kurt doing gun repairs in and his selling car. a couple products out of the back of his little car. Out of the back of his... What was it? It was like a Mazda or something? It's or like a little hatchback. Like a little Mitsubishi, hatchback. Like a, it was like a little car, and he would go yeah. to events, and he would never get to play because he would always be fixing people's crap in the parking lot. Yep. And that was when I met him was in 2008. Mm -hmm. That was when it I was, met him. Oh, God, I don't remember. Yeah, speak of the devil, he just walked past. He just walked past. <laughs> um, yeah. That was when I met him. Back in 2008. His name's Curtis Hardy. Go stalk his Facebook. <laughs> He's only got like 2,000 people friends on it gonna, anyway. So you flack for that. I'm grabbing another. <laughs> yeah, like, he generally gets out and plays a lot of games. Like, a lot of the Nat Ops we vend, he's... He comes... 80% of the time, he's the one running the register. Like, yeah, you say probably, if you've been to a event we've done, you've probably handed him cash, and he's yeah. gone, like, howdy to you. Howdy. He's generally pretty soft-spoken. <laughs> he's not as loud as me and him. <laughs> yeah. He lets us be the, the, the loud, annoying ones. Uh, Matt K. Hey, Amped. If I go with HPA, is it possible to fill my own takes at home with a compressor, or do I need to fill them with some other gas at a shop? I don't know what other gas you'd use, but... Oh, um, okay. depending on what you would need a very expensive compressor setup in order to fill your tanks at home yes or you could get the or, bike pump and do it for about three hours so there's a couple options um, you could either go the multiple thousand dollar routes and get a, an industrial scale compressor yeah you could go spend about seven hundred dollars and get a shoebox compressor they're little compressors that are about this big and it'll take ooh, it'll take hours, but it can fill up to forty five hundred psi tanks. You have to yeah. if you buy the right one, mm -hmm. you have to be very cautious of which one you buy, so you don't buy the wrong one. Make sure you have all the right or fittings, lines, all the right lines, all mm -hmm. stuff which doesn't isn't included in that cost, by the way. Yeah. Or you could, if you wanted to fill at home, you could get a hand pump, which will take you days, yeah. <laughs> days and days and days. What I would suggest if I were you, especially if you don't live near a shop where you can get them filled, like a paintball field, mm -hmm. paintball shop, uh, airsoft shop that has a compressor, um, airsoft field, scuba shop. If mm -hmm. you don't live next to one, what I would also suggest is getting a scuba tank and yeah. a fill head for your tanks. And then take that to a scuba shop, have that filled, and then you can get like three or four tanks off of w one scuba tank. Yeah. It'll be decreasing in pressure every time you fill, so we won't get as much air in your small tank. But you can fill that once, go to like, you know, a couple months worth of games, mm -hmm. fill your own stuff at home, and then just go take it in and get it refilled again. Mm -hmm. That's what I would suggest if you want a home fill station. 
Yeah, just get a. So that would be cheaper. Yeah, and then just make sure you kind of do some research on like. And uh, please don't blow yourself up. Yeah, make sure you do research on all like the hydro testing and stuff hydro, like that. Yeah, you got to learn about that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you you also have to be careful with like. Eh, you could probably. No, I'm not gonna go down that route. Whatever, pull one. <laughs> but can you do it? Yes, it's expensive though. The ATF will get involved somehow. Another big one. Zachary yeah. Turan, this question may have been asked already. Probably. What would your dream BB Wars vehicle be if you didn't have the Humvee? It can either be an already made vehicle or one you build from the ground up. I'd personally take a Jeep Wrangler and put tracks on it, obviously with a gun, rocket turret, and nothing else. Also, there needs to be a pleb to pro how to paper mache with Anthony after knocking over the water bottle. Hashtag whoa, 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 water boy. Hashtag haterade. It's a bigger table now. <laughs> hashtag you damn, have a long reach. You're going to Hashtag damn Anthony back at it with knocking shit over again. All right, so the perfect airsoft vehicle to me would be a Polaris side by side. <laughs> really? You downgraded there. That's all I want because I just want something that's big enough to carry me and my shit to where I need to go. <laughs> that's it. That's all I want it for. I don't give a, I don't want to put a gun turret on it. I just want to spray paint it tan so no one sees it and put some camo netting on it and then yeah. I want to drive to wherever my my place is that I need to respawn and want to drop all my crap there. That's it. To be honest, I would be roughly in the same boat. I would That's just all want, I want. I would just want an ATV. Just an ATV. Just a nice ATV and then have like... Because then I don't I even wouldn't want... have a gun mounted on it, but no. I'd have like a so mount The store for like... guns. Yeah, so yeah. You could like... Because I don't want to drive around and shoot at people. Because yeah. the problem with using airsoft vehicles is that the, the guns, the mounted guns on them, like the big machine guns and stuff like that, do not dramatically outrange mm-hmm. or like have more stopping power compared to their real-world counterparts versus real rifles that are handheld. So the problem is, is they're just not effective. I'm sorry, like, guys who put a lot of money into trucks and stuff, they're just not very effective. Mm-hmm. Now, I get wanting to ride around in one because you don't have to leg it everywhere. I get that. Yep. But I would much rather literally just use it to drop my shit somewhere and then go out on foot. I'm more effective on foot than I ever am in a vehicle turret. Because That's what I mean. Like, I would love to... Get like a group of like dudes and just be like mimic like an ODA group or something. Get like ten quads. dudes with quads and like maybe a couple dudes get dirt bikes if they want to be. Yeah, special. and if I really wanted to go like, tearing like, around out in the yeah, and if I wanted to yeah. go do a super flank, I'd literally just ride around yeah. the enemy force, drop my quad off and all my mm-hmm. kit. Yeah, then sneak up on them, murder them all, and then run back to my quad and drive away. Yeah, that's all I want to do. Like, but <laughs> sorry, if you were looking for something more along the lines of a like larger vehicle. I would probably want to get one of the like, I like the it. older like SAS Land Rovers. Those are pretty cool. An older Wrangler, something that I don't have to care about the body panels on. Like I can yeah. just run into a tree stump and be like, you just get <laughs> whooped on. <laughs> Whatever. Like oh, I broke that. I don't know. Sorry, something that the three. parts are cheap for. Like what? Like a Wrangler, because they all use standard parts. Uh, Tony, is it always oh, is, is that Gillespie? Is that Gillespie? I had a guy. Giuseppe? I knew Gillespie? a guy in my unit whose name was Gillespie, and that's how he spelled it. We'll, we'll do Gillespie. I'm already. Sorry. If we're if we're messing that up, I'm sorry. Hey, Ant, I own an Elite Force M4 CQB and want to buy a Mark 18 rail for it. My only problem is that it has come to my attention that it isn't fully TM compatible. I've asked two people about rail fitment, and I've gotten two complete different answers. One said I'll have to buy a completely new receiver set, and one said that the rail would fit fine without any modification, which is right. As long as you're getting the Mad Bull Mark 18 rail, it should slap on. It should literally just slap on. Elite Force, fine. Uh, Because Bauer has an an Elite Force, uh, the Elite Force metal body. I don't know if you're talking about the plastic one, but the metal body is VFC, and that is TM compatible. So he has that. I'm trying to think of who else makes DD rails. DD rails? Literally just Mad Bull. That's what I mean. I'm like, unless you get like a weird China brand one. Uh, oh, I got nuclear airsofters again. Amp, what are your thoughts on the Mancraft HPA engines? I have still yet to see one in person. I've shot a few rounds out of a SCAR, and it was pretty cool. It's When was that? I must have been when I was like... It was uh, last year, Red Storm. There was a group of dudes, uh, that, I was a group of dudes that only ran... I wasn't there for that. There was okay. a group of dudes that only had Daytona guns, and I think one had the one dude had a Mancraft, and it was in a SCAR. A well, SCAR man- heavy, and it was pretty cool. Well, the Mancraft is all mechanical, which would be... Yeah, which would be nice. It's it's an interesting system. It's my thing is like it hasn't. It seems like it's a less, not the Russell Jimmys, but a less popular version of the Daytona gun. It just makes me real think that like maybe it 
is it produced in large enough quantities to get out enough? I or, feel that's probably true. Like, I haven't personally seen any, but maybe there's tech issues with it, things of that nature. I don't, honestly, we don't, I, we really don't know, know, so. Because we've never really seen them. All You're, I can I, say I've is that I so. shot about 30 rounds out of one, and it was kind of fun. Did it shoot okay? Yeah. No, so we, only, we were only indoors, and I think I was only shooting maybe 75 feet. No, well, okay, so that's not so, really a fair. We're, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if those 75 feet, I would have burned somebody. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is my, your turn? It's your turn. Jesus, that would have been flat. Whole stack of them right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Ben Maniscalco, thanks for answering my question, Ant. But I was looking for more how you guys adapt to airsoft with medical physical issues. Hashtag Italian masterpiece. <laughs> um, I mean that's kind of hard for us to answer. Like my only real medical issue is I put contacts in. Glasses. Allergic to bees. Yeah, like, yeah, like I don't really. So like I don't, I don't know what you want. I mean, I don't have a life-threatening or debilitating physical injury or illness, so I don't. Yeah. I can't answer that question. I'm sorry. I just I can't. Yeah. I don't it's, know what the struggle is that anyone else has to deal with because everybody's struggles are their own, and I don't know them. That's what I mean. Like I've played with plenty of people who later on would tell me like, oh, I I have diabetes or something random of that nature, but they keep it to themselves and they handle it. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, it's 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 your own battle each time. Yeah, Green Knight. So how is the Humvee when it comes to maintaining it? Like finding parts for it and random shit breaks, which we all know is Anthony's fault. Everything gets blamed on me, by the way. Anything? Thanks. <laughs> I was the last one to get it stuck. <laughs> thanks, guys. Hashtag Ronald Smash. Hashtag Green Filled Banana Pants. Hashtag Ohio for life. Um, Humvees are expensive. Uh, that's why oh, yeah. the military has an entire list of chores, basically, to keep them maintained and running mm-hmm. that you have to follow on the daily, every time you use it, weekly, monthly, yearly, six months, three months, checkup lists uh, yeah. called Preventative Ma- Maintenance Checks and Services, or PMCS. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're expensive. Now, finding parts for them is also expensive because it's not widely available to the civilian public, and most of it's military surplus, and yeah. it's hard to get a hold of. So I would not suggest I, to anybody who wants to buy one. I would not suggest it. They're cool, but if you really, if you really want enjoy one, lighting cash on fire, they are much. If you have now. disposable income, which I don't, yeah. uh, but if you <laughs> feel just free. really feel the need to light cash on fire, they yeah. since they started developing the new Humvee replacement, a lot of Humvees have gone for sale for like ten, 10 to fifteen grand. Ten to that. ten grand, yeah. yeah. So yeah, they're Gucci there. Now, I used to work on them when I was in the military, and so did Matt Johnson, actually, the Mm -hmm. tech Matt. Um, If you have, it's not, they're not hard physically to work on because they're made for military people. Yeah, they're made to have simple in the field, like I can pull this part off and put a new part on and it works. So they're not hard to work on, it's just expensive. Would you say, like, when you were in country, you carried, like, two wrenches and like a spanner or something like that even though most I was to what you would need to fix the thing mostly even though I'd be on everybody in my unit since we were a truck born unit mm-hmm. um, we always carried a 10 millimeter wrench mm-hmm. and a the large torque bit and then a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver yep and a multi-tool and all of us even me when I'd be up in the gun turret mm-hmm. on 90 percent of the time I would still have all those tools on me because we could fix most of the things wrong with the Humvee with those tools. Yeah, unless and then like the Humvee, catastrophic. And then every up-armored Humvee and truck would also have its own toolkit that would have wrenches and sockets and stuff that was specifically for all of the specific bolts on that truck. Um, so tools were a, ne- a necessary thing all of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jarrett Greisimer, excuse me, Amped Airsoft, when do you think the Crytek LVOAC in black, I would assume, will release? Because I don't want the green one. Otherwise, love the vids. Keep up the good videos. I would love to see an update on Anthony's kit or your SPR build. Um, okay. I'm not sure when the my kit black video, one's coming on. I don't know when the black Just video Just buy a green one and paint it. I, I think what it is is that the more uh, prevalent real LVOA is the green one. So yeah. they're releasing the green one first. And then they're releasing special colors to other retailers. Yeah, so they did all that and the black one will I think the black one on. will come out later because it's not as popular in the real world as, as the colored ones are anyways. Because yeah. if you're going to spend like five grand on an AR-15, you want to show, show it off and make it look as good as possible. Um, now, when my updated kit videos will be coming out, uh, right now we got a lot of stuff on tap, so pr- probably late, late spring, maybe early summer. 
Um, just because, like, yeah. my kit, because of me working for a, a NatApp company, my kit fluctuates a lot. And so I think all of ours do. Like, even Dom's kit that just came out last week, he's already, already swapped some things out on that. We're trying to get Bauer to, like, settle down and put Bauer kit together for a video. Everything. So, uh, yeah. A Jira X. I was actually interested in hearing Anthony's gun collection. <laughs> <laughs> it's big. I, I'm just going to leave. I, I'm not going to go over all of it, but basically, like... Give him five of your favorites. My five favorite guns. Okay. Uh, my 7mm Magnum is hilarious. <laughs> that thing will take down a moose. Um, I have a Pump Action 30-06, which is really awesome. Um, I really love my Browning Over and Under uh, Collector Sporting Clay. Nice. Um, that is like a seven thousand dollar over and under twelve gauge shotgun. It has a gold trigger. It's 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 Just a collect. Because. It's a, well, it's a collector's piece. It's like hand engraved mm -hmm. um, all over the sides of it. It's beautiful. I love that gun. Um, I would say I have a tie for my AR. All any of my AR fifteens and like my my one AK that I never shoot. Yeah. Um, just because those are just fun to go out and run and gun with and go like burn targets and like do drills. Those are just fun because they're fun. And then I really, really, my favorite gun to shoot, and this is going to cause a lot of, like, guys who think they're super gun nerds to scoff at me, but dudes who really are gun nerds are going to respect me. My favorite gun to shoot is my Ruger 10 mm -hmm. Because, like, in a zombie apocalypse or anything like that, the ammo is plentiful, the magazines are cheap, the gun is stupid cheap, it's <laughs> stupid accurate for what it is, it's semi-auto, and, like, you can hand that to anyone and they will score headshots with that for days. Like, it is, like, it is the most fun gun to shoot. Because then I can go out there with all my friends and we can, like, shoot the shit. And we can, like, get yeah. a, a brick of, like, 522s. And we can shoot all day mm -hmm. with it. And it'll just be like, pew, 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 pew. And we can just do stupid things with it. And I love that gun. I really love that gun. Super fun. Those are my five. We got time for one each. One each. Hamza Mozaid? Mozaid? Can someone sorry. tell me? Sorry. <laughs> you guys should just like, we're not good with this. We're name. not good with names. I'm sorry. <laughs> man. Can someone tell me what's up with the banana thing? Uh, banana hammock. It's, 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 it's for creaming and for quietness. That's Post it. This. That's it. That one. All right. Ah, Jack 24. Oh, Why is everyone wearing those gray soft shell jackets and on top of a plate carrier? Wouldn't it be better to wear a multicam jacket top or so? By the way, love the show. Watch every episode. Keep the awesome work. Oh, we know you do because you submit questions all the time. Trust me. We got you. We know. And we appreciate you watching them because it makes me feel like someone cares. Um, <laughs> uh, what is the gray soft shells? So the gray soft shells are the American PCU system. So what it is is it's a layered what system. What does that stand for? I don't even remember. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but basically, it's a layer. It's a layering cold weather system. So it goes from one to seven, mm -hmm. and you layer up your different jackets to get to where you want. The most common layers that people like are the ones and twos for underneath your clothing to keep mm -hmm. you warm, and then a four, five, or six jacket. Yeah. Um, most common is probably the five or six. Condor actually rips off the five and six, and they are the fleece jacket and the soft shell jacket, respectively. Um, I have a level four PCU, which is the rain pullover. Mm -hmm. It's just made to keep out rain and wind. It's not insulated. I prefer that because then I can wear my uniform top with different warming layers underneath it and then just throw that on top to block the wind and keep the water out. Yeah. Um, but the reason they're gray is because originally they released during the time of the universal camouflage pattern, also yeah. known as ACU pack or ACU for, like, regular guys. Mm -hmm. And so the ACU has gr a gray tone in it, and it's just made to match that gray tone. That's all it is. Um, nowadays, they also issue them in multicam, and they issue them in all kinds of different color patterns for different branches and stuff like that. Uh, but the most common to air softers, because it's the easiest to get a hold of and the cheapest, yeah. is the gray, gray pattern. Because Even it's, then, it's not that cheap if you're not no, looking in the right place. if you're places. not looking in the right place. I pick mine up for stupid cheap, mm -hmm. but you got to know where to look. They're very hard. I'm not going to do that search for you. you just got to go look, dude. Yeah. But that's why they're gray. And for most Milsim games, because if you're doing, like especially like a America versus whatever side, the gray PCUs are great for uh, American team because they're an American-issued camouflage color and an American-issued equipment. 
So it just fills right in, especially like Milson West, where it's Rust Four versus yeah. The the Russian side doesn't really have any. They don't even like colors, sort of close to that. They don't have any colors. Like the solid gray, you kind of get an idea. Now the reason that they wear them over top the plate carriers because they're purposely made to be baggy, so that in a torrential downpour where you get caught in the rain, you can just throw it on Mm -hmm. and zip it up and keep yourself dry and warm. Yeah. Um, Preferably, if you have time, obviously you should put it underneath your plate carrier so you can still use your stuff. But in a pinch, it's made to be big, so you can wear it over top, and it won't be too tight. It's not, uh, it wasn't Arcteryx, it was somebody else. Anyways, continue Arcteryx. No, it was a first spear, I think. Okay. Um, they had a, it was a PCU, but it was like a hoodie style, so it was a pullover, but the entire chest had this giant cry. Is No, this was a first spear, because they oh, said okay. it, was, it was a rare, like, it was a, like, one-time limited batch. Literally, the entire front can just, like, Velcro rip open, so your mags are exposed right away. Cry sells a top yeah. that's super warm, and literally, it only comes to here. Yeah. So, it's not long, so it cuts off right where your mags are, so that you can still use your plate carrier and all right, that stuff. Right, your man titties. Yeah, I mean, it, it covers up your your, your nibbly bits, but it, it leaves your love handles cold. <laughs> Whatever you need, man. Uh, but, you know, is what it is. So, um, yeah, man, I... I like my PCU gray jackets. I think, well, first of all, I'm looking for one. I love them because they're a we, they're just a just a standard color that you see all kinds of apparel in. So I can wear them mm-hmm. hiking. I can wear them in public. Yeah, I can work with a lot of stuff too. I can just wear them with jeans, and I don't look weird. <laughs> it looks weird yeah. wearing around a multicam jacket with my jeans on. Mm-hmm. It makes me look super try hard. So. But it looks good with multicam. Looks good with UCP. Looks good with woodland. Yeah, yeah looks good, good with a lot everything. of colors. They're they're yeah. worth it. They're very nice. Mm. Anything yeah. else you want to add on that? I think we're good. Yeah, that's it. So, we got ones came out this week. We got new stuff. We also have the M249 and M4, or AK, sorry, AK F1s. Oh, did we? Yeah, we got those. Oh. I saw them in the office. We only got like a handful of them, but sweet. But yes, all the standard center lines should be here or coming out soon. Uh, look for the offsets coming pretty soon. Also got the... New red line SFR. That's, that's such a weird acronym. Yeah. I'm sorry. Super red fast line, refresh. I get what the acronym is, but it's hard to say. I'm sorry. It's just yeah. <laughs> but definitely a new regulator for a lot of you guys. They're looking for something for that that mad ups. And I definitely, I'd love to compare that to the Wolverine Storm and see how they stack up. Yeah, we haven't done any. We haven't done any HPA stuff testing lately, stuff so. lately because we've been moving a lot. Should probably do that soon. Yeah, we got a lot of tests for various things that we got to get going on. Yep. Um, also, we got the Oakley M Frame Alpha kits in. Hot. Super nice. Oh, I forgot we hid them, so we would forget oh, about th- them. Oh, I forgot. Hello, children. Hello, children. These actually, if they got online in time, should be on the website right now as you're watching this video. Hmm. Mm. We'll give you a little teaser because we're going to make a nice video. We're going to make a nice video about this. You ever heard of Plat Attack? Mm-hmm. Plat nice. Piss. It's real nice. Uh, these are more rare than uh, Cry Woodlands. This is the only batch of Plat Attack Woodland... Whatever the hell the name is for these. So, it the is... Mark 3s or whatever? These are the Plat Attack TAC DAX Mark 3. Yeah. Combat pants. These are the only woodland ones in the world. With the Space Age knee pads. With Space Age knee pads. As you can see, I have mine installed on my pair. I'm too lazy to put mine in yet. But yes, these are, these have been, Anthony will attest, these have been two years in the making. Two years. It's been a minute. Um, It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute, but these are pretty balling. So if you follow us on like Snapchat, anything like that, you saw a couple of teaser images. Super, super high end. Like if you guys are super geardo like me and you like super expensive nice mm-hmm. stuff, these are the these are the tickets. You'll know who Plat Attack is and you will know that they make good stuff. Very, very good, good stuff. stuff. So like we said, ye, they will probably be the same time today or early next week there will be a release video about these. Mm, yeah, probably. Probably this week. So we'll see. Yeah, man. Mm. But yeah, these will be going online very mm. shortly. Mm, I feel so good and new. I smell like Aussie land. I smell like Aussie land. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> but yeah, that and I'm sure there's a slew of all sorts of new stuff. Yeah, we're going to be releasing more overview videos so you guys can see like more product overviews and stuff like that. We're also thinking of doing a video series where we basically just talk about like cool stuff that we personally own that you don't necessarily have to buy from us. 
Um, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah like we gotta like, hash it out, but yeah. Yeah, probably something like that, so you guys can see more of like things that we own and recommend mm-hmm. personally. And we also were thinking about maybe kind of using that as a way to make it a sort of different review style. So like if you guys have products like again like we don't carry that you kind of want to hear about, if we can source them, get mm-hmm. them in, find a used one, we'll try and do that, and we can yeah, just we'll see what's up. Test stuff we'll out. Probably for you try guys. that out. I hope you guys like some of the new features in Ask Amp. It's usually it's kind of just to break up the fact that we have to keep cutting the video. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. But it's gonna make it more interesting for you guys. So I hope you guys like that. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, so if you guys got questions about stuff, uh, suggestions for products that you might want to see or want to know about. Mm-hmm. Uh, potentially uh, gameplay things or anything like curious about airsoft that you want to know about. Uh, we do this every other week. We're always here. Uh, we are as honest, as brutally honest as we can be. So it's so dumb, but it works. I don't know how it works, but some people <laughs> just like to listen to us blather. Uh, but anyways, this has been Anthony. Matt. Thanks for stopping by for Ask Amp episode 44. Uh, submit your questions down below in the doobly-doo or on Facebook where we post this. Uh, thanks yeah. for stopping by, guys. See you later. Yeah. See you. Not next week. Deuces. The following week. Deuces. New stuff. <sighs> Seriously. I got some problems, dudes. Um, Here's the deal. There's a lot of horrible accusations getting thrown around uh, by lots of groups of people about the national level airsoft scene. Now, I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to point any fingers directly at anybody. But there's a lot of things being said. And one half of those things is completely untrue. Um, And some of that stuff has actually been hurled personally at me, and I am not, I am not cool with that. So, all I'm going to say on my opinion of that is, if you talk shit, I mean, be prepared for a battle. I'm not a super mean dude, I'm pretty relaxed, but those are fighting words. And for all you guys out there who know me, you know what team I'm on. Got some big rings, and we roll heavy. Lesson of life for this little uh, segment this week. Um, Liars and thieves and horrible people tend to get what they deserve in the end. So be the good guy in everything you do. Life will work out pretty sweet. Otherwise, it won't. Play honestly, have some integrity, do right by your battle buddies. Deuces, dudes, I'll talk to you later.